Welcome. Thank you all for tuning in today. I'd also like to thank the staff for organizing this event, as well as the Arnold Foundation for making this event and so much of our work possible. Like many organizations, we had planned to host a convening in the spring of 2020. We're delighted to have you all here for our virtual version instead. I'm Amy Finkelstein, a professor of economics at MIT and co-scientific director of j North America. Along with Marcella Alsan, whom you will be hearing from later in this session, I am also co-chair of our healthcare delivery initiative, which is the subject of today's convening. I'm delighted to have the opportunity today to share some of our accomplishments over the last eight years. This afternoon, we'll be hosting discussions about some of the many research projects and partnerships we have supported sharing some of the lessons learned and discussing important directions for future work. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a difficult time for everyone and the healthcare community has experienced this acutely. It has brought the importance of equitable and effective healthcare into sharp relief. We look forward to continuing to foster the opportunity to answer key healthcare delivery questions as we move forward from this crisis. Let me begin with a little bit of background on who we are and what we do. j North America, based at MIT, conducts randomized evaluations, builds partnerships for evidence-informed policymaking, and helps partners scale up effective programs. j North America was launched eight years ago in 2013 as the newest regional office of the j network. We're part of this larger j network, whose home base is also located at MIT, and which has several other regional offices located around the world. j itself was founded in 2003 by Esther Duflo and Abhijit Banerjee and Sendhil Mullenathan, with the goal of transforming how the world approaches the challenge of global poverty. Esther and Abhijit have since been awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics for their experimental-based approach to understanding poverty and its solutions. And it's the same model we use here at j North America. j overall goal is to change and improve lives by finding policies that work. And we do this with a three-pronged approach that's shown on your screen. Research, is the first prong. Rigorous evaluations add to our knowledge base. The second prong is capacity building, teaching others how to use these tools themselves. And the third prong is policy outreach, building partnerships with policymakers to ensure that what we and others learn from evaluations lead to evidence-based decisions and scale-ups of effective ideas. Our approach incorporates all three of these elements, each contributing to the j ecosystem as part of a cycle. Completed evaluations spur policy outreach and capacity building to interpret the results, which in turn spur new organizations and decision makers to pursue new evaluation ideas. The first major research initiative that we launched at j North America was our US Healthcare Delivery Initiative back in 2013. As part of j North America's larger mission of finding what policies work to reduce poverty, our healthcare delivery initiative focuses on evaluations of policies and programs to improve the efficiency, equity, and effectiveness of healthcare delivery. Like the larger j model, we use the same approach, supporting policy-relevant research designed in collaboration with care delivery organizations and policymakers. On your screen, you see the, on the, in the picture, you see Dr. Jeff Brenner speaking at our very first conference, Care Delivery Team. At that time, we were just launching a partnership in which my colleagues and I worked with Dr. Brenner and his extraordinary team at the Camden Coalition to conduct a rigorous evaluation of the Camden Coalition's high profile healthcare hotspot model. This model aims to improve the self-sufficiency of medically and socially complex patients in navigating the healthcare and social services systems. And Dr. Brenner will be moderating a session later this afternoon and talking about some of what we've learned from that work. 
The healthcare delivery initiative is co-led by myself and Dr. Marcella Olson, who is trained in both medicine and economics and is now based at the Harvard Kennedy School. We work with an incredible network of affiliated universities from many different universities, some of which are pictured here, all conducting rigorous research on important topics, all committed to offering their expertise to JPAL's capacity building and policy outreach efforts, and all also offering their support to get early stage new evaluations off the ground. Since our launch, we've had the privilege to work with dozens of partners via training engagements, technical assistance projects, and full-scale rigorous evaluations. Over the years, we've worked with state and local governments, health and human services agencies, nonprofit healthcare delivery organizations, hospital systems, and private insurers to learn together what can improve the efficiency and equity of health. Without our amazing partners, none of this work would be possible. I wanna pause for a moment since most of this uh, convening this afternoon will be forward looking and just mention briefly how we all got started and how that fits into where we're going now. As some of you may know, I was introduced to randomized evaluations in my own work when I discovered in 2008 that the state of Oregon was expanding Medicaid to uninsured low-income adults via a lottery. This produced an opportunity ripe for randomized evaluation of the impact of covering low-income uninsured adults with Medicaid. And thus, the Oregon Health Insurance Experiment was born. There was and is great debate about the effects of Medicaid. Does it cut down costs and ER use? Does it improve enrollees' health and well-being? And countless other questions. The findings from our randomized evaluation, the first ever randomized evaluation of the impact of Medicaid, once we published them, received incredible media attention, which is, I think, a testament to the credibility and power of rigorous research to reach a broader audience. However, there's also a glass half empty version of all this attention. Part of the reason our study received so much attention was because a randomized evaluation of health policy like this one was so, is so rare, or was at the time. To find out exactly how rare uh, they are, we systematically reviewed papers published in top journals. When we did this in 2015, we found that less than 20% of studies of healthcare delivery interventions were randomized controlled trials. That compares to more than 80% of studies of US medical interventions. And before you think, well, of course, you know, the FDA requires randomized controlled trials for, for, for drug approval, even if we take out drug trials, two thirds of the studies of US medical interventions were randomized. So when we launched in 2013, a large part of our goal was to change that balance, to try to make rigorous randomized evaluation of promising US healthcare delivery interventions closer to the norm rather than the exception, to move us closer to our cousin in medical interventions. I think relative to, relative to our expectations, uh, we've had considerable success. Over the last eight years, we've really accomplished a lot. We've grown our network, worked with researcher and partner organizations to level up their knowledge of randomized evaluation, and coordinated a large number of studies on a range of topics, including cash transfers, insurance take up and enrollment, substance use disorders, child and maternal health, mental health, and many more. We've also tackled several issues that you'll hear more about today over the course of this afternoon, such as the social determinants of health, physician patient racial concordance, and large scale payment reform. We're now, I think, really at an inflection point, moving from our initial proof of concept, can we get this done? Can we get more rigorous evaluation in healthcare delivery to where are we going to concentrate our efforts now that we know we can get it done? And we're incredibly uh, grateful and aided by the fact that there are so many like-minded organizations who have joined this effort and are doing their own independent work, many of whom are present today on the panels and in our audience. 
The community of RCT enthusiasts in healthcare delivery policy is growing. Hospital systems like NYU Langone and its Center for Healthcare Innovation and Delivery Science, led by Dr. Leora Horwitz, is doing incredibly exciting rapid RCT work to improve their healthcare delivery, as you can see highlighted in this New England Journal of Medicine sounding board. Increasingly and extremely promisingly, we're seeing the federal government focus on using RCTs and actually implementing them as a credible and useful tool to better understand the effects of their healthcare policies and programs. As interest in rigorous evaluation and healthcare delivery has grown, we've been working collaboratively with partner organizations to build their capacity to conduct their own rigorous evaluations. We've been able to bring together healthcare delivery organizations and researchers from our network to help them understand randomized research design and how they can use this approach to measure the impact of their own program and policies. We've also had the opportunity to support state level health and human services agencies, such as the one shown in the memo you see on the right, to offer the same kind of technical assistance to design evaluations of their programs. We're very excited to we recently expanded our focus on policies and programs as one of the 15 Roybal Centers in the United States. The MIT Roybal Center for Translational Research to Improve Healthcare for the Aging is funded by the National Institute of Aging as part of the National Institute of Health. It supports randomized evaluations of low cost, high impact behavioral interventions to improve healthcare delivery and health outcomes outcomes for older adults in the United States. For example, one recent study we have supported examines the impact of different vaccine messaging and of different messengers. In this study, investigators Marcella Olsen and Sarah Eichmeyer examined patients' responses to messaging about the benefits of the influenza, influenza vaccine. They experimentally varied, varied the racial concordance of the messenger as well as whether the messenger acknowledged injustices in the medical field. They found that for black respondents, race concordance of the, center, of the sender increased the impact of the messaging. And perhaps most interestingly and promisingly, they found that acknowledgement of injustices in the medical field was as effective as race concordance. And you'll be hearing more from Marcy Olson about this and other related work later today. To date, our network has, has completed uh, a large number of evaluations. Just to briefly give a few highlights, uh, one thing on which that we're particularly uh, passionate about and proud of is that some members of our network have completed their first RCT with j -PAL's support. One example of this is our first speaker, David Molitor, and his evaluation of the workplace wellness program at the University of Illinois, which he'll be presenting next. Supporting and encouraging the next generation of researchers is an important element of our capacity building work and crucial for fostering more trials of healthcare delivery policy. Several of our projects have involved government partners like the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. For example, Adam Sakarni, another one of our affiliates, has partnered with CMS to understand the effects of strongly worded letters to physicians over psychotic patient. And later, Neil Mahoney, another of our affiliates, we at the state level, our researchers have partnered with state insurers in Colorado and in California and conducted evaluations to better understand the barriers to insurance take up and plan choice. In California, the, the effort led by j -PAL affiliate Wes Yin was so impactful on a member of the California's evaluation and research department team that the organization has gone on to carry out additional RCTs independently. Those are just some of the projects already completed. We have many more projects in the, work, in the works with diverse sets of partners from local community health centers and nonprofit organizations to government partners at the state level and private sector healthcare providers, several of which will be featured in the discussions later on today. 
So I don't want to hold back any more from the exciting agenda we have. Let me just tell you what's on tap for this afternoon. Uh, we'll kick things off first with some research results on a workplace wellness evaluation, which will show why randomization was so key to figuring out what the effect of these programs are. Following that, We'll have some of our partner organizations from RIP Medical Debt and Geisinger Health, as well as the researchers from our network that they're working with, have a discussion of research partnerships and the critical social determinants of health questions being answered by their RCTs. Then we'll take a quick Zoom break. And to keep the conversation flowing, we'll have a discussion on large scale evaluations of payment reform and where uh, the field can go from there. And then finally, on our last panel, we'll close with a spotlight on the racial equity research by our co-chair, Dr. Marcella Olson, and her co-author, Dr. Fatima Cody Stanford, who will talk about their work to understand how to address racial and ethnic disparities in health outcomes. Thanks for joining us and thanks to all our panelists for their participation.